My name is Jim Johnson, author of Comprehending the Cosmos, A Macro View of the Universe. Today in this eight minute video, I'd like to talk about how to calculate the mass of ordinary matter in the universe. I know there are millions of you just like me who are captivated by this subject, right? Well, anyway, some of the calculations are not obvious. They are somewhat technical in nature. So please proceed with this understanding. Thank you. Calculating the total mass of ordinary matter in the universe, what you always wanted to know. Data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope support the assumptions and calculations in this presentation. Not long ago, I read that the universe contains about 10 to the 56 grams of matter. That's one followed by 56 zeros. Then I thought to myself, is matter just ordinary matter? Are stars and gas within and between galaxies included? How about dark matter? After researching numerous sources, I concluded that it was difficult to confirm this value because the references contained vague definitions and lacked calculations. I discovered there was no good reference for calculating the mass of the entire universe. Now this is partly because physicists are reluctant to define a radius for the universe. There is a debate on the size and even number of universes. Our assumption is a finite, observable universe. How far we can see, slightly less than 13.7 billion light years. Thus I ignored the possibilities of an infinite universe and multiple universes. The objective is to validate 10 to the 56 grams for the mass of ordinary matter in the universe. There are two approaches used in the calculation. The first method extrapolates the mass based on the mass of all stars. The second approach was totally different and it calculated the mass from the universe's critical density. We will then compare the results. A key question is 10 to the 56 grams a good number for the total mass of ordinary matter. For the first calculation, we need to know how many stars there are. Obviously, there's no way to know exactly. From current literature, the best range is 10 to the 22nd to 10 to the 23rd stars. In a recent lecture, Brian Cox quoted 3 times 10 to the 22 stars. A simplistic assumption supporting the 10 to the 22 number is to assume 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 billion stars. Thus we will use the 10 to the 22 number as the number of stars in our calculation. To validate, let's look at the Hubble Ultra Deep Sky image, which covers a very small area of the sky. Galaxies are everywhere. This 2004 Hubble Ultra Deep Field image contains an estimated 10,000 galaxies. The patch of sky in this area is 3.4 arc minutes square. For a relative comparison, it would require over 50 of these images to cover the full moon. If this area is typical for the entire sky, there are over 100 billion galaxies in the universe. More recently, in 2012, Hubble scientists produced the Extreme Deep Field, an image which showed even more galaxies for a comparable area. However, in order to compute the number of stars based on these images, we would need additional assumptions. The percent of large galaxies, and the percent of dwarf galaxies, and the average number of stars in each. Thus the choice was to select the simplest assumption, 100 billion galaxies and 100 billion stars per galaxy. Next we need to know the mass of an average star. Within the Milky Way, if a large number of stars are counted by spectral class, 73% are class M stars. A class M star contains only about 30% of the Sun's mass. Considering mass and number of stars in each spectral class, the average star is 51.5% of the Sun's mass. Since the Sun's mass is 2 times 10 to the 33rd gram, we will use 10 to the 33rd gram as the mass of an average star in the universe. Now that we know the mass of an average star and the number of stars, we can calculate the mass of all stars. That would be 10 to the 55th gram. Is this the correct answer? It's 10 times less than the 10 to 56 grams we quoted earlier in the induction. 
What about gas within galaxies but not in stars? What about gas between galaxies? To find the correct answer, we must look at the components of ordinary matter. Ordinary matter is defined as atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The three components, stars, interstellar medium, and intergalactic medium, are shown on this pie chart. Stars comprise only 5.9% of the total mass. Thus, we can calculate the mass of ordinary matter by taking the 10 to the 55th grams and dividing it by 5.9%. The result is 1.7 times 10 to the 56 gram. Considering order of magnitude numbers, this is very close to the 10 to the 56 grams we quoted earlier. In our second approach, we will use critical density to calculate the mass of ordinary matter. Critical density is the energy density, usually expressed in grams per cubic centimeter, where the expansion of the universe is poised between continued expansion and collapse. Critical density equals the density of ordinary matter plus the density of dark matter plus the density of dark energy. Dark matter interacts with gravity, but not light. Dark energy is the energy of empty space. Its origin and composition are unknown. The equation for calculating the critical density in the universe is shown. Using the current value for the Hubble constant, the result is 0.85 times 10 to the minus 29th gram per cubic centimeter. This is commonly quoted as 5 to 6 hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. This pie chart shows the components of critical density. The percent is the percent of total energy. For ordinary matter, the percent is 4.8. Thus, the density of ordinary matter is 4.8 times the critical density calculated on the previous slide, or 4.08 times 10 to the minus 31st grams per cubic centimeter. Note that although neutrinos are defined as particles like electrons, they are shown separately because they are so different from ordinary matter. We can calculate the mass of ordinary matter by multiplying the density times the volume of the universe. But what volume should we use? The universe has been expanding for 13.7 billion years. Thus, the radius is now about 46.7 billion light years. This gives a volume of 3.58 times 10 to the 86 cubic centimeters. Thus, the mass of ordinary matter is 1.46 times 10 to the 56 grams. Now let's summarize our key inputs and results. For the star extrapolation approach, the key inputs were number of stars and percent of ordinary matter in the stars. For the critical density calculation, the key inputs were the Hubble constant, radius of the universe, and percent of ordinary matter in all matter. The results, the mass with the extrapolated method was 1.7 times 10 to the 56 grams. When calculated using critical density, it was 1.46 times 10 to the 56 grams. Because ballpark assumptions were used, this close result is a coincidence. For example, if we use 3 times 10 to the 22 stars, the extrapolation me method would be 3 times larger. In conclusion, the ballpark number of 10 to the 56 grams for the mass of ordinary matter is a reasonable approximation. This and 12 other captivating properties of the universe you always wanted to know are documented in my reference document, Comprehending the Cosmos, a Macro View of the Universe. Thank you.